Welcome to Gone Fishing, a show diving into the cybersecurity threats that surround our highly connected lives. Every human is different. Every person has unique vulnerabilities that expose them to potentially successful social engineering. On this show, we'll discuss human vulnerability and how it relates to unique individuals. I'm Connor Swan, CEO of FinSecurity, and welcome to Gone Fishing. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Gone Fishing. I'm your host, Connor, the CEO at FinSecurity, and I am joined by the wonderful Dustin Boltlander, two-time MSP owner, insurance guy, and self-acclaimed man of many hats and few talents. Dustin, how are you? Pretty good. You get to enjoy the uh, the messy home office today, so we're getting the full authentic experience. Well, I got the heating pad right there behind me. I got the PS5 ready to roll when I'm done work. Well, yeah. my buddy's done There's work, a so. uh, uh, walking desk treadmill right there that uh, I honestly haven't used in several months. Yeah, I was going to ask cool. how- how are you going to walk on it when it's uh, leaned up against the wall? Yeah, it's, I get the exercise moving it out of the way whenever my wife needs to get into the cabinets. So different type of exercise. Different type of exercise. So you're a two-time MSP owner. Um, for folks who have no idea who you are, do you want to give a just a short breakdown of MSP owner, now your insurance? Life story. Yeah, sure. so um, I kind of went from one extreme to the other. Uh, the first MSP, uh, me and three other guys bought out the founder whenever it was just a couple of uh, employees at the time. So that was a uh, technology point down here in Austin, Texas. Um, I sold in 2019. We were about $4 million a year. Or no, I'm sorry, 2017. Um, we were about $4 million a year. Uh, and we were the traditional, uh, I call it a la carte, right? Uh, you know, Hey, Connor, you want to buy some security awareness training? Cool. We got you. Uh, you want to do hourly? Yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, just sort of whatever. Every client looked different from their you know, technology stack to the services we provided uh, just across the board. Um, it was profitable. Uh, we had very solid, consistent, uh, above average numbers. Uh, the last two or three years, especially, it was just clockwork. Uh, but the headache was um, I led the client-facing team, so kind of the CIO, the virtual CIO sales and all that stuff, uh, that part was difficult because it was constantly, you know, hey, can we go in? We need to get a new firewall. We need to budget for this. There's a lot of asks that involved money. So then 2019, started Clear Guidance Partners. Um, I did two things completely different, uh, all in on single vertical. So we are like 70% law firms. Uh, and then it's also no more a la carte. So it's the, uh, Gary Pika talks about like the cake model. Uh, We're including everything up to firewalls, uh, 365 backups. Uh, We added SIM this last year with Blumira um, to where, you know, there's no, hey, Connor, I need you to buy this. It's just included. Um, So, again, just like two opposite extremes. Um, Did it one way. It it worked. Uh, It was a little bit more stressful. Uh, This is easier in certain ways. Choosing to work with lawyers full time is its own source of stress. Um, <laughs> ask me again in a couple of years if that was a good idea or not. But uh, yeah, and then the other piece that I'll say is we did uh, really well. So we're up to 29 people. Uh, this is year five. So everybody's like, wow, that's incredible. Um, I'll, I'll take some credit, but the other part is, dude, starting an MSP the second time is like a cheat code. That's how you mentioned PS5 earlier. It's I call it New Game Plus. People yeah. either laugh and get it right away or they say, what yeah. the hell are you talking about? But uh, yeah. I made so many mistakes. I did layoffs twice on the first one, stuff like that. Uh, the second time around, it's not the, I know what I did right. It's that those 50 mistakes that I made on the first one, like I know not to make those again. So uh, that was that was the biggest benefit on doing it round two. That was the biggest benefit. What was the uh, biggest mistake? If you, if you, something you want to share that you think on you made? The, the first one? Yeah. Um, collections, uh, cash flow, full stop. So now we're set up got automated payment notices you go 15 days overdue you get a threatening thing that we're going to cut you off um you go 30 days overdue um we're doing cut to emergency services immediately uh i had so many times the first msp where it was like oh yeah it's this new customer like they need financing um there is one story that i always tell we have this company they just got venture capital funding you know oh we got all this money they bought a brand new office space build out uh, new computers across the board. You know, this it was one of those things at MSP, you're like, man, this is awesome, right? The dream customer, they just, they're cutting checks left and right. The problem was they didn't actually cut the checks uh, that 
we went in, did everything. You know, they had done a press release that they had the money, this, that, and the other. So we fronted everything for them to the tune of it was like fifty-eight thousand um, dollars. Thirty days in, they still hadn't paid us on it. Um, and this wasn't just labor either, right? We did new uh, new servers, new computers, office move, just the whole nine yards. Um, and then, literally, it was over a weekend. We got a call from like the COO, and he goes, "Hey, man, they cleaned the place out." What the hell are you talking about? Were they clean? He's like, literally, the owners came in, they took everything. We just came, we showed up to the office Monday morning. The entire office is empty, and like they ran out of state or something crazy. But uh, ends up the funding had never actually come through. That so, is, uh, I am very big on, uh, and hopefully Ray or CD doesn't see this, and please don't tell him about it. But it's one of those things of like you know, get paid up front. Uh, Ray's really good about beating everybody over the head with that. Uh, I learned that lesson the hard way. Uh, through that but that's been one of the biggest things is basically since day one we haven't had cash flow problems because equipment everybody pays up front um you know deposits even on labor on projects stuff like that uh we've just been very disciplined on that side of it i think everyone learns that lesson at some point in yeah. uh in their career especially if you're starting a business yep that is interesting oh, wow so they just like lied to your face and man it's Knock on wood, I haven't had any crazy stories yet, but I've had a couple of those um, on the old MSP uh, where it was just, um, we had one guy was, uh, I can't give too many details because it'll be really easy to find in the news, but uh, the guy was like indicted on federal charges um, because they were doing this with some sensitive stuff and basically took all the data and also again, fleed, that guy fleed the state, I think, but um, that was another one. There was a couple situations where I was left holding the bag um on it so again learned the very painful way good news is i i at least learned slowly because each time it was slightly less amount of money like that guy i think we made him pay you know 50 percent deposit instead of 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. learning the mistake is only half as impactful at that point yeah and that's so, got to where we're at today and i i learned the full lesson and i know better so in describing how how you work at Clear guidance now, it's there is a plan. You subscribe to the plan. It's not a la carte. You're not choosing from a menu, not having multiple different service offering. Well, you might have different plans, but you're not having, you have 100 clients, you don't have 100 different services. Yeah, we got to. You either have uh, it's co managed or not. Um, and even on the co managed side, I don't think we have anybody bigger than three IT staff because our rule is it's kind of what makes somebody a good fit is that we're working with, you know, again, going back to law firms, we're working with the partners. Uh, and the firm administrator. We don't ever work for IT. So anybody who does co-manage, it's a really small IT department. And that was the, again, makes it really consistent that there's not ever, oh, I'm talking to the IT guy who's our boss, right? You have to kind of interact. You have to deal with things differently. Um, the COOs, the firm administrators don't ever care about patching reports, for example, where an IT person might. Uh, so it makes that stuff the more standardized it is, uh, you know, the more comfortable everybody is. It's easier to do your job. It's easier to build processes and stuff around it. Um, so that was, I have a really good memory about trivial details. Um, I'll forget important things. Uh, but, you know, I, I remember exactly this client from seven years ago that, you know, they had a R710 and it's at the top of the rack above the neighbor's, you know, equipment kind of stuff. So the old MSP, I was able to sort of uh, superman it. But it yeah. was my phone was ringing nonstop all day with the help desk saying, hey, this came up. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a unique case. You know, Connor wants us to work through the CFO for that kind of stuff. It was just chaos, right? I, I literally couldn't take vacation versus at CGP. I mean, it's the clients look 95% the same when you walk in the door. Um, there might be slight differences in the software that they use internally, but not much. It's still the same categories. Uh, so that was a pretty huge. Uh, we're able to train the help desk up on staff in you know, just, or I'm um, sorry, we're able to train the help desk up on the, supporting the clients in just, you know, a couple of weeks because there's not this huge, oh, hey, this is completely different. That's completely different. It's expect there's these 10 types of software that they're going to have. They're going to have a FortiGate. Uh, we're going to have Huntress on all this stuff, you know, that sort of thing. It's very, 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 very standard. That makes a ton of sense. That's uh, what a, now s selling as a, as a plan having this fixed price and operating the way you operate is different than a way a lot in the industry do. So what's some of the different results is one 
don't know. I'm trying to say not bad or good. It's like you yeah. get different things. What What are the different yeah. things you can get? So um, the good on it is it makes it really easy to close new business. Um, we had last year like an 80% close rate uh, that in a lot of cases, it ends up being to where it's like, we're either going to keep our current IT company or we're going to switch to clear guidance. Um, or people will tell me, you know, we're getting to know with you guys before we even talk to anybody else. Because there's only like four or five uh, MSPs at any scale that are doing law firms nationwide. So it's like you end up on kind of that short list, then they narrow down regionally. That's awesome. Um, the flip side of it, though, is it makes it really difficult whenever you do have those situations where it's like, look, Connor, we just bought a new Sonic wall. Um, you know, we have no before subscription for the next two years, uh, so on and so forth. Like, we want to use this. And my answer is no, there's no discount. You got to switch, right? Uh, so just being so regimented in that, uh, that makes it a little bit harder. Um, and then there's starting to, um, I hate to be the guy that's sitting here, you know, being like, I, re- I heard on Reddit, but uh, <laughs> there was a topical uh, thread to this conversation of somebody talking about the a la carte services and kind of, you know, the shift back to hourly. Um, and we're seeing a lot more of that. We had more project requests come in that's like, look, we just want you to do a security assessment, uh, you know, a technology roadmap, stuff like that, but we don't want to engage long-term managed services. Um, we keep having a ton of requests of, we just want security services. We don't want a full managed package. Uh, can we do that a la carte? Um, they're starting to be a bigger shift back that way. Um, over the last, let's say the last two years, uh, where, you know, you go back to 2019, everybody was all in on managed, um, everything's cyclical, right? It's the cloud. Now it's coming back on premise somewhat. I think we're seeing that a little bit too in the MSP industry where, uh, people are wanting these one-off projects just from that in-depth expertise. Uh, That's the other nice thing on the uh, in-depth vertical. You're saying, you know, what's the good and the bad on selling that stuff? Um, There's one really prominent MSP nationally that does a ton of project work and they easily get away charging, you know, $200, $300 an hour for like desktop refreshes. And you're sitting here like, what the hell? How are they able to, you know, get that? And it's because they know the legal industry so well, there's no questioning whenever a firm's talking to them. It's like, yeah, you're the guys. Oh, I guess this is what it costs. So you get that additional uh, authority uh, being able to do the higher pricing than you would as kind of a generalist MSP. Uh, and then, you know, the, the, the downside is uh, I'm sitting here, you know, get it, talking to lawyers all day. So pick your uh, pick your verticals carefully. Or at yes. least know what you're getting into. Uh, talking to lawyers. Everyone loves that, right? Yeah. Well, that was kind of what made us do that was uh, I'm one of those, uh, you know, on the insurance side, which we'll get to at some point. Um, is I just see that opportunity. It's like everybody else is running away from this. I'm the guy running towards the fire being like, oh yeah, this is going to be fun. Like, let's get in there. And that was the same thing with, uh, I hear from every MSP was, you know, oh, we don't like lawyers. Oh, we don't work with lawyers. So cool. I'm going to, you know, it's a good, they pay on time. They pay well. Uh, yeah. Again, the software stuff is relatively standardized in at least the categories. So uh, here we are. Yeah. And uh, that's where, you know, if people are avoiding it, that's where a lot of opportunity could be. Yeah. Uh, for sure. How should a new MSP owner go about thinking about this? Like, do they do a la carte? How should they get their first set of clients? How should they structure things? What are some things they should be thinking of? Yeah. So I'm going to have the total contrarian take on this where everybody's like, all right, Connor, you got to sit there, you know, put up some savings. Don't take a paycheck for six months. Um, you know, have a business plan, this, that, and the other, like throw all that crap out the window, man. Just go in, dive, wing it. That's how most business owners have started. Um, get, just get started. You know, you're going to have analysis paralysis around the stuff. If you have enough to be able to sock away six months of savings and, uh, great, more power to you. Like that's an okay thing too, but that drives me nuts whenever people recommend that for starting a business of the, the level of planning, this, that, and the other. Um, I don't want to say MSP isn't particularly hard, but it's like that the bar is not that high to get started. Right. What do you need? A laptop and a website and email address. Congratulations, you can claim you're an MSP at that point. Um, so get out there, start soliciting business. Um, and early on, so we're still you know, very much in the managed services. We're not doing like a big shift to hourly or anything. But if you're starting a business, and we did this the first year, was hourly is not the enemy. Don't avoid hourly at all costs because your first year, what's going to be good for you? What, is, what do you need? What's most important as you start to scale and hire people? Money. <laughs> so if you can go in and, you know, somebody calls, it's like, Hey, we just want you to come in. And I literally had this happen. It was like a friend of a friend introed me to somebody. Um, he was in Houston 
And he called and he said, hey, I got your info from, you know, so-and-so. Uh, we need to get our sonic walls replaced. I was like, cool. I talked to the guy. They had like a 10-person IT department. Uh, so at that point, I just threw out there. It was going to be me going down there doing it. I used, used to be really good at sonic walls. I was like, oh, yeah, this is no problem. I was like, cool, we'll come do it. But it's going to be, you know, and I kind of took in my head. I was like, it's going to be about this much. I was, you know, I think I doubled it. I was like, cool, Connor, it's going to be like $3,000. I'll get them purchased, configured and everything. I'll drive it down there and do it on a Friday night. And just in a heartbeat, the guy was like, done. Because I came highly recommended. We knew the product, right? Um, and it, so on a lot of that stuff where, and I know you're going to get 10 comments being like, oh, that's highway robbery. I can't believe you did it. But there's a level of paying for the knowledge, right? If it was watch guards, no, I'm not going to do that. I've never touched a watch guard in my life besides to pull it out of the rack. But the stuff <laughs> that you know, it's like your your expertise is valuable. We don't need to do this. Uh, I used to call it moral margins, where it's like, oh, you have to, you know, there's a there's an ethic. These guys are calling you because you're the expert, because you know the product, that kind of thing. So yeah. if it's a quick project, like just put a price out there that makes it well worth your while. You can take that cash, put it towards something else. So that's the biggest piece I always get people getting started is that one-off work. Don't go and sit there and do residential for $50 an hour. That's not what I mean by that. But when these projects drop in your lap where it's like, oh, yeah, I can absolutely do that. Um, we did a ton of, uh, again, uh, Ray Orsini, if you're listening, cover your ears. We did a ton of Ring Central installs in 2019 because me and a couple of guys were really good at Ring Central. And there's a lot of really bad Ring Central partners out there. And that was, again, is it the work we want to be doing? No, absolutely not. But while you're ramping the business up, and if people are willing to pay $200 an hour, yeah. Do it. We did a couple thousand seats during Central Year One. Um, that was just one-off projects on that. Yeah, I think that's really smart. Have you ever heard of the analogy of the uh, the ship, you know, the cruise ship that couldn't get started and the ship engineer they brought in to fix it? Have you ever heard this? Oh, the, with the, where he hammers it in the one spot? Yeah, and then sends him a bill yeah. for a million dollars. They say, dude, you came here for five minutes. We're not, we're not paying yeah. you this. And he's like, all right, let me break down the invoice for you. And it was $10, my time, $999,990, knowing where to swing the hammer. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> no, that same kind of thing. Like yeah. every, every MSB should know that whenever they're starting off, because that's the biggest problem. People complain about, you know, pricing is price pressure, uh, price downward pressure, you know, things like that. Is it the, this industry, IT in general, we're not yeah. the most social, outgoing. You know, we're not uh, super people centric. Uh, they just don't know their own value and don't push for that. There's nothing wrong with charging two hundred, three hundred dollars an hour for doing some of this work if somebody really wants to. And it's that same thing. Look, you did a great job over here. You know the technology. Please come in and do this. Um, and everybody needs to be charging more. Yeah. For folks who wanted to connect with you or connect with Clear Guidance, where would you suggest they do that? Uh, LinkedIn's probably going to be best. Um, I've think hold on now i gotta look up my linkedin i want to I mean, say we, it's doc no it's just d bollander never mind okay i thought i, mean, I had we'll, dr we'll, bollander dr bollander we'll put we'll put links to it so folks can connect with you and uh maybe so ray can slide in your dms and say that he absolutely hates everything that came out of your mouth today but oh, yeah. i'll be watching for it but no i'm always happy to talk to people um i always call myself like a connector i try to do that you know hey man i can't help but let me introduce you to somebody that can so always happy yeah. to chat with folks Awesome. Uh, well, folks, if you're listening or watching, feel free to connect with uh, Dustin or Clear Guidance. We'll have links to all that. Dustin, thanks for joining me. It was a blast chatting with you, and I'm sure we'll be having you on the podcast again at some point. Awesome. Thanks, man. See ya. Thanks so much for tuning in to Gone Fishing. If you want to find out more about high quality security awareness training campaigns, how to launch them in ways that actually engage employees to change their habits, then check us out. Fin Security at fincec.io. That's P H I N S E C.io. Or click all of the wonderful links in our show notes. Thanks for fishing with me today, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.